So what is one word that comes to mind whenever you hear the word 3D fundamentals? That's definitely going to be 3D balls. So my name is Emmanuel Okafo and you guys are welcome to this Blender tutorial brought to you by the Louis Art. Today we'll be looking at fundamental in rigging inside Blender. So like I said earlier, um, starting with 3D ball is basically the basic theory behind that is starting with simple object um, to basically understand the fundamentals before going into something more complex. So starting up with animation, it's always safe to start with simple object like this ball, which is quite popular. Um, the reason for that, it just allows you to focus on the fundamentals like the weight, the timing, and just um, basic principles of animation. So if you go straight in into a character, you're going to run into a um, lot of pitfall which um, of course is predictable because you have no idea of um, what you're going into so that's basically same mindset starting rigging with something simple so this rigging a ball might sound simple but it's quite um, advanced uh, because it's filled with so many techniques that uh, once you understand you can just easily apply it to any rig which you want to go for so let's jump right in and start working so of course i know most of the viewers that will be watching this video are mostly beginners trying to learn about rigging or even though you're an intimidate user trying to learn about um, rigging um, there's something for you and i'm going to try to slow down a bit so that you guys can follow along but not slow down to the case that it becomes boring so i'm going to be using shortcuts sometimes so i have my screencast key here that you can follow along and yeah so let's jump right in so in blender to add objects so that you can use the 3d cursor to indicate where you want objects to be placed so using that we want to place the bone right in this position so right now we're not so um, accurate to the positioning so to be more precise we can select just this vertex point and do shift s and select cursor to select it this is going to place the cursor right where we want it and now we can go ahead and add the single bone so selecting your bone, you want to go to the display panel, this nice um, cube here. And you want to scroll down to the viewport display. By default, this in front is unchecked. Um, that's why we cannot preview or see the bone right now. So if we click on it, you can see the bone through any object. So for the display type, by default, it's set to wire. But just for personal preference, I like working with wire because it just looks neater in case the scene gets a bit crowded. So now I'm just going to jump into the edit mode. So you could go that go in there by hitting the tab, or you could just switch it from this nice drop down. So we'll just drag this upwards, and this is what we have. So now we're just done with the basic um, first rig. So now let's go ahead and parent the ball to the rig. So there are several ways you can achieve this in Blender. So there are three main ways um, of parenting objects inside Blender, um, apart from the constraints. So the first way is parenting object to object. Um, the second way is parenting object to bone. And the final way is parenting um, of parenting objects through weight painting of AKA binding objects. Okay, so um, for a situation like this, here, um, which is quite simple, you already know you want the sphere to be parented to just, just this one bone. Um, so what you want to do is select this bone um, object, shift select this and jump right into the, um, sorry, you want to go into the edit mode. Sorry, um, pose mode. You want to be in the pose mode and then you can hit control P and select bone. And now this bone is going to be the parent of this object. So this is one way you could go. Another way you could go is if you select this object, select this bone and hit Ctrl P right in the object mode. Ctrl P so you can do automatic weights. So now this bone is going to be binded. So this, this object is going to be binded to the bone. And if we select this object and go to the data panel, we can see it has created the vertex group. And that vertex group should be red because um, that is the weight of this bone. So if we um, just reduce, cl clean up the um, weight, you can see now if we move this bone, it's not going to be carrying the entire object. So for it to be able to carry the entire object, we need to 
apply all the weights so this is um, the binding method for parenting objects okay so we already have our basic um, control for the rig so we can move it we can rotate it we can scale it up uh, so this is basic, uh, basic rigging so the next step is constraint so if you're familiar with ball rig you know it has squash and stretch it um, which is necessary to give it that cutting feeling depending on the kind of material you're trying to animate um, if you're trying to animate like a metal ball so uh, the squash and stretch is practically um, not necessary except um, just to give it some life uh, but let's go ahead and set up the squash and stretch so for the squash and stretch we can just grab um, this bone i'll just turn this on and if we extrude it um, we can have a new bone and we can do alt p to clear parent and by clearing it is going to disconnect the bone you could also do just parent still keeping the parent but just disconnected okay so now once we, we have this we can now select this bone and go into the constraint tab so we have um, two type of constraint we have object constraint and we have um, bone constraint so when you are in the pose mode and you want to add some co control over the bone um, you want to be in the bone constraint so we'll do, um, go here add bone constraint and want to select stretch to so for the target we we'll select the amateur which is this so we call this um, rig so that's the target we're selecting and for the bone we want to select this bone which we could rename and call this just t so we could just select it here okay sorry we want to select this one okay so you can move this around and it works uh, but there's another, a faster way which you could apply constraint um, because most of the times you might not name your bone and you already have lots of bone in the scene and it gets uh, very um, tedious to just find the bone so a quick way to add apply constraint is to select the source and select the target and hold on hold on control shift c and this menu is going to pop up and you want to just select the constraint you want to apply and blender is going to go ahead and fill up everything you need um, for the constraint to be set up and now we can move this and it's gonna work so um, let's just play with some of the settings for the squash and stretch um, so we can restrict some things that we don't want it to do and improve on things we want it to do so for example for when it squash uh, when the ball squashes I don't want the squash to be so extreme and crazy like this because this is quite crazy so I want to add like a limitation so we could do that with the volume max so by it sets for one you could increase this to two depending on what you want so let's say three and once it gets to three it's going to, it's not going to get any bigger um, which is nice so it doesn't look so crazy so we could also play with the um, stretch so set this to zero and that works too so everything is all set for this and let's keep moving so for the next is we're going to be setting up the parent um, hierarchy um, which is um, a bit tricky um, in this kind of situation so when you have a ball and you're trying to animate it you want to have um, two center of gravity um, so the first center of gravity should be here so you want to be able to control um, rotate the ball um, from the middle part okay and you want another center of gravity from the root so you want to be able to do the same thing like rotate the ball translate everything from the bottom side so let's set that up just remove this annotation so to do that we'll just select this one in edit mode and do shift a um, let's do that again so we'll do shift s to place the cursor in the right position so it's going to place it right in the middle which is what we want so we'll now add another bone and we'll just scale it down slightly okay so this is for the middle um, center of gravity and what we want to basically do is to parent this main control bone and then this constraint bone which if we select it to you can see we can move the entire ball so we want to parent it to 
just this one boom so we'll hit ctrl p and now if we move this um, it's working and we can just select this one control bone and we can translate or rotate the ball the way we like it so the next um, center of gravity we, which we want is at the roots here at just at the bottom so we need another bone there so we could just go into the edit mode and extrude down wall so we want the pivot point to be around here so that's why we extruded, um, extruded it at uh, this position we so now we can just clear alt speed to clear the parent so um nothing is controlling this bone so now we want to select this and parent it to this now so if we move this we can control everything and we can also select this and move it so that's basically the fundamental setup for a ball um for a ball rig and now for the next step we'll be setting um the bone shape so bone shape can be quite tricky in blender so, um there are add-ons that can really speed up your workflow and i'm going to share that with you after i show you how to do um, the fundamental of setting it up um so you understand um then later i'm going to show you the add-on which is uh, free that will speed up your workflow so what we want to do is create um, the shape manually so we'll just go ahead and add a circle okay so we want uh, this shape okay we want to flip uh, switch the shape from this bone to this nice circle so to do that we we'll just go to this bone tab and scroll down to viewport display and you will see custom shape by the way you could hide your bone in case you don't want to see it so for the custom shape, we can just select this circle or you can use the eyedropper to, to select it. Okay. So once you're done with that, you can now go into object mode for, um, from the bone and select the circle. This is where you can tweak um, the placement. So if you rotate this, you can see it's updating with the bone and you can scale this up slightly. Note that all the changes you want to make to the shape of the bone must be done in the edit mode of the object okay so you can see we have um, done that and we have a new shape for this bone and you can add some odd custom stuff you can extrude this just to make it look um, nice as you can see and you can go ahead and either store that in a, a different collection i usually just delete mine okay so let's create another uh, one more um that is going to be for the stretch control so for this like um like we did previously we select this and just scar some object the cube so right now um we can see it's placed but we don't like the placement we want it the tip um it's to start from this position so in edit mode we can just drag this and you can see it's not um, acting the way we need it to act so we need to uh, this is where the complication or the weirdness comes in so blender uses um, quite different orientation depending on the object mode so when you're working with bone the y is the um, up axis and when you're working with object the y is the um, like back and front eye axis um, I'm sure you already know if you're familiar with the way Blender works. So we can just move this upwards towards the negative y um, z axis based on the local um, space. So that's why it's going to go up this time. Okay. So once we have it placed, um, unlike this cube is right now, it's not displayed as wired. It's displayed like a bone with shape so we don't want that so we need it to be wire frame so we can just click on this wire frame by the way if you have like multiple bones with um faces and you want you can just hold an alt and just click on this wire frame and it's going to fix that for you okay so that's it guys uh so we've set up the basic shape so let me tell you about the add-on which i was i'm talking about um, if I could remember it so um, it's quite faster so you just add a plane so let's say we want to replace this bone with this plane um, so let me see if I can remember the add-in um, 
Okay, so align and set and align bone shape. So um, let me give you the name of the add on. So the add on is bone, let's see, shapes. Okay, so the add on name is Orient Custom Shape. So it's a free add on. You can just search it on Google, Orient Custom Shape. So this is really fast, it's really awesome. Um, so the way it works is you just select place the object where you want it to be okay and shift select the bone and pop into the pose mode and now you can select this bone and do if you hit w or the context menu um the, the, the parameter should be here so if you do set an align bone um, it's going to switch the shape and right now you cannot notice any different different sorry um, but if you go ahead and delete this cube you can notice we have a new custom shape for the bone so yeah that's it um, by the way if you don't want to send a bone um, which um, it might be distracting you can just select the bone and hit M to move it to another different layer so now you can just focus on the bones which you need to work with so that's it guys i hope this tutorial was helpful if you wish to see more from me don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also click the bell so you get notified anytime i post a new video and like this video if you if you have been if you stayed to this um, point i'm pretty sure you are enjoying this video so like it and yeah see you next time bye bye for now